There are a lot of movies about outer space. Most of them look great, but not all of them follow real science. So today, let's figure out which films actually listen to physics. We probably need a scientific theory to explain why Moon is still so underrated. Duncan Jones's film takes place in a future where humans are already mining resources on the Moon, but the story focuses on one man, isolated for years with only a robot named Gertie for company. But let's stop for a moment on the idea itself. Mining helium-3 on the moon isn't just a fantasy. There really are measurable amounts of this gas in the lunar soil, and the concept could one day become reality. As for the lunar base, the harvesters, and the rovers, the crew worked closely with space engineers and robotics experts and took inspiration from real spacecraft designs. When Jones showed Moon to some NASA scientists, they had just one question. Why does the mining take place on the far side of the Moon? According to Jones, the in-world explanation was simple. The company chose the far side so the mining would not affect wildlife back on Earth. Ron Howard's Apollo 13 retells one of NASA's most dramatic real missions the 1970 flight that was supposed to land on the moon until an oxygen tank exploded on the way there. The film opens with the real political and scientific drive behind it all, Kennedy's challenge to put a man on the moon before the end of the 1960s, and America's race to catch up with the Soviets after Yuri Gagarin's flight, that push created the Apollo program and gave the movie its sense of purpose. Tom Hanks plays Jim Lovell, commander of Apollo 13, joined by Kevin Bacon and Bill Paxton. Just before launch, Lovell's original crewmate, Ken Mattingly, played by Gary Sinise, is pulled from the mission because of possible measles exposure, a last-minute change that really happened. One of the film's most impressive achievements is how real it looks in zero gravity, because much of it is real. NASA allowed Howard to film aboard its reduced-gravity aircraft, known as the Vomit Comet, giving the floating scenes a level of authenticity no visual effects could match. And of course, the line everyone remembers, Houston, we have a problem. In reality, it was Houston, we've had a problem. But close enough, the explosion sequence, the loss of power, and the desperate improvisations to bring the crew home are shown with remarkable accuracy. One of the biggest inaccuracies is the argument between the astronauts Dramatic, sure, but it never happened. In real life, they were professionals, calm, disciplined, and trained to handle extreme stress. If you listen to the mission recordings, they're surprisingly uneventful, even when everything is falling apart. An astronomer listens to the stars and hears something no one has ever heard before. That's the story of Contact, with Jodie Foster as Ellie Arroway, a scientist searching for signals from intelligent life. The film was based on Carl Sagan's novel, and his influence shows. Contact treats science seriously. It captures the real methods behind the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Massive radio telescopes scanning the sky, data analyzed by computers, and researchers waiting for a signal that might change everything. Foster's character was inspired by astronomer Jill Tarter, who confirmed that most of the film's details are accurate, from the control rooms and the language scientists use, to real technical ideas like hydrogen times pi, a frequency aliens might choose to prove they're intelligent. Even the final sequence, Ellie's journey through a wormhole, is rooted in real physics. It's based on ideas from Einstein's theory of general relativity, where distant parts of space can be connected by tunnels. Solaris earns its place in this list not by showing detailed science, but by exploring the limits of what science and people can truly understand. Psychologist Chris Kelvin is sent to a space station orbiting the strange planet Solaris after disturbing reports from the crew. What he finds is far from a typical sci-fi mystery. The remaining scientists are emotionally unstable, and soon Chris starts experiencing the same breakdown. After his first night on board, 
He wakes up to find his wife, Hari, who died by suicide years earlier, alive beside him. Solaris has somehow brought her back, using only Chris's memories. But is she truly Hari, or just a version shaped by his flawed recollection? The planet itself offers no answers. It creates strange, shifting forms across its surface, possibly alive, possibly not. The story, based on Stanislaw Lem's novel, centers on a powerful idea, that alien life may be so fundamentally different, we might not even recognize it for what it is. A thought that offers one of the best answers to the Fermi paradox. Ridley Scott's The Martian begins with the worst day imaginable for an astronaut. A violent storm on Mars separates Mark Watney from his crew, and they leave him behind, assuming he's dead. Alone on a hostile planet, he has to survive with limited supplies and find a way to signal Earth. When it comes to science, the Martian gets a lot right. NASA scientists praised the accuracy of the landscape, the mission design, and even the day-to-day problem-solving. The movie captures what real astronauts do best – think, adapt, and refuse to panic. But that opening storm? It's pure fiction. The atmosphere on Mars is so thin that even 100-mile-an-hour winds wouldn't have the power to knock over a spacecraft or send debris flying. The dust storm makes for a great scene, but in reality, it would barely shake your helmet. Another stretch is the sheer number of things that go wrong. In real missions, one or two failures might be manageable. Half a dozen in a row would almost certainly end the mission. Still, without that chain of disasters, there's no story. And The Martian was never meant to be a documentary. Strictly speaking, Hidden Figures doesn't take place in space, but it deserves a spot here all the same. Theodore Melfi's film tells a true story that took far too long to be told. Three black women whose work helped launch America into orbit. Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson were mathematicians at NASA during the space race, calculating flight paths and trajectories for Project Mercury and the missions that followed. The film gets the essentials right, its focus on these human computers finally gives credit to the real women whose calculations made orbital flight, and later Apollo, possible, even if some timelines and details are simplified for the story. If anything feels dramatized, it's the math itself. The blackboard scenes showing equations solved in real time were added for tension. In reality, most of those calculations took days and involved whole teams, not one person working alone. Released before the first moon landing, 2001 A Space Odyssey remains one of the most realistic portrayals of space travel ever put on screen. Stanley Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke worked with aerospace experts to keep the science authentic. And it shows. In space, there's no sound. And the film leans into that. Exterior shots play in silence, with only an astronaut's breathing audible inside the suit. The motion is right, too. Ships and pods maneuver by real physics without airplane-style turns or roaring engines. The spacecraft design favors function. Discovery One, the deep space vessel, isn't aerodynamic at all. It's a long, modular frame built for zero gravity, with an internal rotating centrifuge to simulate artificial gravity and practical ways for the crew to move without drifting off. Even the small details hold up. Packaged meals, drinking through straws, and the slow boredom of long-duration flight. And many of the future technologies it depicts ended up being real or close to it. Adapted from James R. Hansen's biography, First Man follows astronaut Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission, and shows what it took to get there. When it comes to accuracy, First Man stays remarkably true to the real events. One reason it feels so authentic is how closely the filmmakers matched real NASA footage. You can actually compare the movie's lunar landing scene with the original Apollo 11 video, and they line up almost perfectly. Interstellar is one of the most ambitious sci-fi films ever made. 
blending human drama with serious astrophysics. Set in a future where Earth is becoming uninhabitable, a NASA team travels through a wormhole in search of a new home for humanity. The film was developed with input from physicist Kip Thorne, and it shows concepts like time dilation near a black hole are depicted with rare accuracy. The visuals of the black hole Gargantua were even used in scientific papers after the film's release. Gravity, relativity, and the effects of deep space travel are all treated with respect. That said, not everything holds up. Scientists have pointed out that the intense radiation near a black hole would likely be fatal, something the film glosses over. The story also pushes into abstract territory, combining space and time in ways that can be hard to untangle. Still, Interstellar gets credit for bringing real scientific ideas to a mainstream audience and doing it with ambition, style, and surprising accuracy. If you've made it this far, let's bend the rules a little and end not with a movie, but a series. The Expanse is a show that raised the bar for realism in sci-fi. It combines political tension, working class characters, and real physics. It mostly avoids exterior sound and vacuum, doesn't pretend communication is instant, and never flies ships like fighter jets. That commitment to realism comes from showrunner Naren Shankar, who has a PhD in applied physics and electrical engineering. He wanted a show that didn't run away from science, but embraced it, where gravity only exists when the ship is accelerating and light speed delays actually matter for the story. And beyond the big ideas, it's the small details that make The Expanse such a joy to watch. A bartender on series pours drinks at a 45 degree angle because of the Coriolis effect, liquids behave exactly as they would in low gravity, drifting and clinging to surfaces. Even the way ships flip and burn or use attitude jets to turn feels physically consistent. Of course, it's not perfect. A few things slide into convenient sci-fi magic. The recycler, for instance, seems to handle everything. Dishes, laundry, even evidence. But those are small things in a show that does so much right.